Good afternoon, everybody. This is a live severe weather briefing this morning as we have a couple days in a row of severe weather. This is the highlight video from my storm chase yesterday uh, that I definitely underperformed. I should have gotten that tornado out near the Throckmorton area. I got a bit of a late start yesterday morning due to some paperwork that I had to do. Uh, so I had to target the western mode. I targeted that supercell near the post area, and then I dropped down to the Ozona supercell, the tail end Charlie. And really, the hodographs weren't quite as favorable to the south of that stationary front. There were more splitting uh, type supercells that were out there. Uh, the right movers did not dominate. Uh, there you can see the radar omega loop from yesterday. And it was actually that lead cell near the Throckmorton area, just to the northwest of Throckmorton, that did produce a brief tornado out there uh, as it crossed the warm front. It was as those small storms developed and lifted off to the north. And then once they interacted with that stationary front, that was when they really started uh, to produce. And that one storm produced quite a few tornadoes right in a row. Today I'm targeting the uh, west Texas area, northwest Texas and the north central Texas. There is an outflow boundary that's in pla that, that is in place across northwest Texas and also north central Texas as well. And now I want to show you my, my target area for today. I am thinking about just blasting to the north to uh, target Iowa for tomorrow. I do think that tomorrow looks even more favorable uh, than the other days. But this is my target area for today, which I'm going to chase on the way up. And uh, you can see there is a bit of a late arrival of the upper system. Earlier models uh, were showing all this slug of uh, strong mid-level flow being over west Texas as early as yesterday as recent as yesterday or the day before and that's when it looked like it was going to be more of a significant severe weather event across west texas that was going to cause uh the 40 knots at 700 millibars to overspread that instability and it looked like it was going to be a pretty substantial severe weather event but now all the kinematics are going to be focused to the west of the target area uh, here over the southwest and the timing of this system just doesn't look like it's going to lead to a significant severe weather day today across west texas but the later arrival of this system is going to lead to a potentially significant tornado setup across southern south central iowa maybe up into central iowa for tomorrow so i am targeting that area tomorrow i'm down in the big spring area so my plan is to head off to the northeast loosely target this area across northwest texas on my way but i'm really heading up to iowa tomorrow some of the models though do show a couple isolated storms developing near the Abilene area in the vicinity of an outflow boundary across the area so far. I'm going to show you that outflow boundary right now. It's very visible on the wrap analysis to the south of it. You've got instability building. Here is the outflow boundary being left behind by this blob of convection or a mesoscale convective complex that's lifting through the Arklatex. You've got a little bit of some elevated convection there just to the south of the Red River. But this outflow boundary here is likely going to retreat just a little bit north. But with that upper level system still well to the west, there's not going to be a big time low level jet that's going to cause this uh, stationary front to retreat rapidly northward as a warm front. So I do expect the western edge of this outflow boundary later on today to be the focus for supercell development. And we'll loop this model forward to see where the wrap uh, shows these models. We'll see where the HRRR shows them. We'll look at some forecast soundings. And then we'll also look at Iowa and additionally the uh, Colorado low that is going to bring a winter storm to even Denver up towards Cheyenne. Blizzard warnings are in effect uh, from southeastern from southeastern Wyoming into the Nebraska Panhandle. But this area here in northwest Texas near the Abilene area, the western side of that outflow boundary, that is especially uh, the most interesting area by about 5 or 6 p.m., 7 p.m. That's when I do expect storms to initiate out there. So now let's break down the models. We'll look at the uh, start with the HRRR and see what that shows. I try not to get too bogged down with the HRRR solutions. The individual runs at least. There we go. And this is on the Pivotal Weather website, an incredible website to visualize these forecast models. Here is the Vort Max that we were talking about, still well off to the west. And not a lot of a low level, a, a pretty modest low level jet, even by 22Z. And that's because all the kinematics are over the southwestern US. 
you've got about 15, 20 knots max at 850. That is gonna increase as we get closer to sunset, but it's not gonna blow up to that 40 or 50 knots that you really need. But here's zero Z, this is at about 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time, and you can see a 35 to 40 knot low level jet in the vicinity of that the western edge of that outflow boundary, uh, likely near the Abilene area down there across South Texas. So there is a little bit of an enhancement of that low level jet near zero Z, and it is gonna increase big time after sunset. Look at that right there. 35, 40 knots streaming into that cell near the Abilene area. So the wind shear does get better near and just after sunset. And look at this big time photograph here. Let me make sure that my head is not blocking it. Definitely a favorable photograph. You're looking down at the uh, atmosphere, the shear profile, surface winds near calm in the vicinity of that outflow boundary. And then the one kilometer wind is increasing over 40 knots by about 8 p.m. That leads to a 30 plus knot zero to one kilometer shear vector and a critical angle that's pretty close to 90 degrees there. So this storm is taking in purely streamlined vorticity. If you can imagine a, a nearly calm surface wind and then the wind just above it, southerly at 40 knots, that's gonna create a horizontally rotating gyre or vo vortex line, and in fact, a lot of them invisible throughout the atmosphere that are oriented perpendicular to that zero to one kilometer shear vector. So when this critical angle is 90 degrees, the storm motion is moving parallel to those invisible rotating tubes in the lowest kilometer and it's a lot more uh, easier, a lot more effective at uh, stretching those into the vertical and producing tornadoes at this configuration. A ton of cape. Look at this, uh, look at the directional shear in the lowest kilometer or two as well. Critical angle, 73 degrees. This is a very favorable photograph, especially just after sunset. In the vicinity of that outflow boundary where those surface winds are near calm and right at the nose of this little mesoscale low-level jet there. Let's see if the uh, HRRR has precipitation. And it does. It has a monster supercell out near the Abilene, Throckmorton area, same area where the weak tornado happened yesterday. We already looked at a forecast sounding in the uh, inflow region of this storm. You never want to pick forecast soundings inside the supercell because it's going to look like this. Okay, uh, look at the vertical motion inside this supercell. So it's simulating the updraft in that mesocyclone. You basically get a sounding or a photograph similar to what our rocket sensor experienced when it was going through the Linwood tornado with this curve flow as, it, as the parcels go around uh, the mesocyclone there. So that's why you always want, when you pick soundings, you want to make sure that they're in the open warm sector, not in the middle of a supercell storm. And then you get a more classic Ekman spiral type deal here. Big instability though, look at this cape, even after sunset. So these supercells are gonna continue for a few hours after sunset. My plan is to chase this event in Northwest Texas and then try to blast all night up toward Iowa, chase both of those days. And then I'm gonna head west and cover the blizzard in Western Nebraska to try to sample the warm sector and the cold side. So the HRRR is definitely showing the western edge of this outflow boundary to really light up as the energy finally ejects across West Texas. And um, eventually late night, that could be getting closer to the DFW Metroplex, maybe North Dallas. That's at about 3Z, 10 p.m. there. This is 11 p.m. It's turning into a mesoscale convective system with a flash flood potential. You've got convection lighting up all across West Texas, North Central Texas, even into Oklahoma there, near the Ar Ardmore area. By this time, I'll likely be blasting northeast toward the target area of Iowa. So I'm going to try to head up toward Kansas City, dominate Iowa there. But look at the, after dark, look at the uh, st storm relative velocity in the lowest kilometer. 300 to 400 here across North Central Texas. That's big time. So the wind shear does ramp up right along the western edge of that outflow boundary, according to the HRRR, but this is at zero Z. You're talking 150, 175, zero to one kilometer helicity. So right at 7 p.m., that low level shear is quite marginal for tornadoes, but then after 7 p.m. and right at 7 p.m., it starts to ramp up. You've still got a PDS tornado sounding in the west side of that outflow boundary. So I'm gonna try to get both of these. I'm gonna try to 
target this area right here near Abilene pretty easy target not that far of a drive from here and then once I see some tornadoes with these storms I'm gonna head northeast to Iowa where it looks substantial tomorrow let's look at the new H triple R run for tomorrow in Iowa then we'll look at the wrap for today see if it's in agreement this is a big system right here so this is when an actual strong mid-latitude cyclone look at this a 991 low tomorrow across north central Kansas into south central Nebraska here is an Iowa warm front that actually lifts way to the north but anytime you get a big low like this it's pretty hard not to get tornadoes out ahead of it you've already got a lot of vorticity in the atmosphere through a deep layer looks like southeastern Iowa right now looks quite active look at this big stretched out deformation zone here still getting hammered in northeastern Colorado south what southern Nebraska panhandle with snow it looks like it's taken a further south track too which is why those winter storm watches have been hoisted for the Denver area as well even though it says three to seven inches of snow in Denver with big wind it is possible that there could be greater totals before it looked like that heavier swath of snow was going to be over southeastern Wyoming into the Nebraska Panhandle. And this system is shearing out big time, ejecting. Look at the bowling ball of a vorticity maximum that is heading up toward the Iowa area. And the surface low is co-located with that upper level system, vertically stacked by this time. But it definitely is ejecting. This would say to target southeastern Iowa right here out ahead of that vorticity maximum out ahead of that banana shaped surface low the low level jet is going to be ripping 50 knot low level jet up here in southeastern Iowa tomorrow this is Thursday evening and then my plan is to head west on I-80 and then get into this hopefully get into the blizzard conditions over over uh, western Nebraska but I might be a little bit late if I do chase the warm sector in uh, southeastern Iowa. Let's see how it has the uh, instability here. This is a 0 to 3 kilometer energy helicity index. And it definitely shows this area of northeastern Missouri into southeastern Iowa being extremely active for a tornado threat. In fact, look at this sounding. As is often the case when you get a little bit further east, you get some shallower critical angles with the hodographs. But you've got a one kilometer wind southwesterly at 50 knots surface wind 15 knots rapid storm motions it's close to 60 miles an hour southwest to northeast here's the elevated mix layer coming in at 500 the area of dry air so we've got a couple days of act action here today across northwest texas near the abilene area tomorrow southeastern iowa northeastern missouri just for fun, this is a convective allowing model, so really this snow is not as accurate, but it'll show it'll at least give us an idea of where the swaths are gonna set up for the cold side of this system. And it still has southeastern Wyoming getting most of the snow, but look at the foothills here, including my apartment. It's gonna get a couple feet of snow, maybe 10 to 20 inches with this furthest further south track. Palmer Divide, the north side of the Palmer Divide gets quite a few down toward Castle Rock, that area. But look at the foothills just getting slammed by big time snow for the from this system and the adjacent high plains of southeastern Wyoming into the Nebraska Panhandle. Let's now see what the NAM has out here. The NAM also is shifting it further south, having Denver getting more snow out of this. Northeastern Colorado Plains into southwestern Nebraska getting hit hard as we just saw there. The NAM has the San Juans getting pummeled with a lot of snow. So I think that the models are trending further south, which is a good thing if there's a winter storm watch across northeastern Colorado and into western Nebraska. Keep an eye on this Denver. Foothills, though, of Colorado, northern Colorado are going to get slammed by this. But I'm going to be dominating the warm sector, chasing down here in northwestern Texas later on today, and then southeastern Iowa for tomorrow. A lot of driving ahead for Gizmo and I. I just touched my face right there. Dang it. Yeah, I've definitely sprayed lice all over this place, this room. I'm still practicing social distancing, as I will continue to do, likely for several months ahead. 
but I'm just going to chase everything moving forward. So stay tuned to my weather reports if you guys do need a break from the coronavirus coverage. Never stop chasing. Stay safe, everybody. If you live in West Texas, southeastern Iowa, northeastern Missouri tomorrow, and on the cold side of the system, northeastern Colorado, Cheyenne, into western Nebraska, it's about to get nasty. Stay tuned, and I'm going to go live later on today as I get into closer to initiation with those storms across northwest Texas, and then my all-night drive up to southeastern Iowa. Glad to have you guys along for the ride. Dominate the storm.